I'm Pete Jefferson. Today we have with us Bob and Lucy Surface, who have been married 46 years, is that right? Right. 46 years. And uh, we want to thank you for taking time to come talk to us today and everyone else that's going to be watching this over the years. And uh, we want to, well, we'll just start by asking the number of children that you've had over the years. Three. Three. And uh, all three of them are living. And yes. uh, what are their names? Butchman and Janet. Butch, Jacqueline, and Janet. And who's the oldest? Butch. Butch is the oldest. Yes. Then. Jacqueline. Janet's the baby. And Janet's the baby. And uh, you have uh, how many grandchildren? Seven grandchildren. And uh, uh, what does he? Butch has how many? Butch has three. It's Butch has three, and what are their names? Scotty, Sean, and Doug. Okay. And Jackie has? Todd and Jennifer. Okay, and Janet? Has Christopher and Kelly. Okay, now who's the oldest grandchild? Is Todd. Todd. How old, how old is Todd? 22. 22. <laughs> and, uh? He was 22 last April. Okay. He's almost 23 now. So he, he's going to going to school or working yeah. for? No. He gets out in February out of the Ball State. Ball State. Mm -hmm. What's his, what's his, he's going to major in? Finance and marketing and finance. Marketing and finance. Yeah. And uh, who's your, who's your youngest grandchild? Kelly. Kelly. And she's? 11. She's 11. She's 11. Right now she has a broken arm. How'd she break her arm? In gymnastics. How big are? Both bones. Both bones. How did she do that? Fell off of the, what do they, they call them, horses? The horses, yeah. right? Fell off the horses. She missed her timing. She was does it real well, but she just, uh, that day she just, her timing was off and she just went right on over. I'll be. But she's doing fine. <laughs> no permanent damage? No, no. She's tough. Yeah. Still jumping around. <laughs> I'll be darned. That's wild. Didn't know it's first time now. I didn't know that. Well, she's still in the cast. Yeah. <laughs> Just done it not too long. What, five weeks ago? Yeah. They changed the cast Tuesday. So it's a lighter cast. A plastic that. cast. Yeah. But it's still from up over elbow because it's not healed yet. Right. It's a very, doctor says, a real, real bad break. How they? But I guess her arm broke here. And it's, will she know. ever be able to do gymnastics again? Or is that? She yeah. says she will. Yes, she is. She's very determined. But she don't want to be a gym that gymnast. She wants to be a veterinary. Now, why is she taking gymnastics the last time? <laughs> she likes it. She loves it. Her ambition to be a veterinary. Let's go back into your past a little bit. Lucy, let's talk about you. What was your maiden name? Uh, my maiden name was Wildrick. Wildrick. Where um, were you born? I was born in Indianapolis. Right. And I was uh, adopted from a home when I was about six weeks old. My foster mother had had a child, and he died when he was back in 1912, and she couldn't have any more children, so uh, she adopted me. And then my foster father died, and then she remarried a man with three children. So you kind of had instant, instant step family, and yeah, and then and sisters, and then later she uh, took another little boy to raise, so there were five of us. And where did you live? We lived, she had a home, and then um, they bought this farm down in Johnson County. And uh, it was just a little um, little three-room house, and believe it or not, it was a little crowded with five kids and two adults living in it. Was, was just, uh, it was a farm, how many acres was it, do you remember? Uh, 48 or something, it wasn't a large farm. At that time, I guess, that was considered a average farm. And everybody had chores. You had chores. What were your chores? My chores, I worked with my stepbrother outside. We did most of the outside work, uh, especially in the wintertime. We'd milk the cows and feed the chickens and the pigs. And my um, stepsister, who actually is, her name's Maxine, and she's from October until February older than I am, but she helped inside. She was a inside girl. Yeah. And then the younger one, She's deceased now, but she was the baby at the time, and she didn't do work. 
when uh, what did you grow crops in the spring or I mean in the yeah we did uh, we plant? had corn um, we had corn and my stepfather worked in Indianapolis as a carpenter but he would come home on the weekends and uh, he would put out the uh, corn and he did it all with horse and you know no tractors or anything like that and then uh, us kids, uh, Maxine included, would go out and we would help till this during the week to keep the weeds out and we had a big um, uh, truck garden, I guess they call it, where we raised all of our own vegetables and uh, and we used to, um, we had a lot of apple trees and we dried apples on top of the chicken house and it was really some kind of a life. At the time it seemed great. Yeah. What, uh you do your own canning and all for the winter and yes. play in food for the winter and all so you wouldn't have to go out? Yes, my mother canned and um, I think Maxine helped her do that and they, uh, we had a, a cellar that it was in, under a separate uh, roof from the house and they stored all the canned goods down in there in this uh, cellar so that we would have it and we had uh, no inside plumbing or lights or anything like that and uh, um, I remember mother used to uh, heat the water to do the laundry. She heated it out on a, built a little place outdoors. There was a little place out there that they put a tub over to heat the water to uh, do the laundry in. And uh, she used to wash on the washing board. Okay. To she do that laundry. once a week or every other week or whenever necessary? Well, in the summertime, I think she did it real regular, but in the wintertime, I don't know how she did it. Of course, we didn't change clothes then like we do today. Yeah. We wore the same clothes all week. Yeah. To school, you know, always you wore the same things. And uh, so the went, laundries weren't big like they are today. When you went to school, you went to how big was your school? It was just a one room schoolhouse. There were eight grades in the one room, and the teacher would, uh, the, cl the grade that she was taking care of, we'd come out and sit on the first row, and there usually weren't very many. I think in the whole school, I had pictures at home, and I think there were like uh, less than 30 kids in yeah. the whole school. Yeah. And um, each cl class, when she would get time to um, want to hear them recite, well, they'd come up and sit on the front row. But, uh, what was your favorite subject then? I don't think I had a favorite. <laughs> I liked school all right, but I just... Uh, you remember anything in particular? Any thing about school that really stands out? Oh, I used to like to um, be in plays they had at school. I usually got myself a pretty good part in them because I like to make believe. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, school was a fun time. The recess we played, we jumped the rope and did do. We didn't have swing sets and all the neat things they have today, but we entertained ourselves. How far did you live from the school? How, how did you get there in the wintertime? It was, uh, we lived about four miles from the school and um, we walked for a long time and then finally my mother decided when the youngest one, um, Dorothy, started to school, my mother decided that we couldn't walk anymore because she was too little and so she demanded that they have a, a conveyance for us to go to school. Well, there was no buses or anything like that so um, we had an extra horse, and they bought her a school hack, they call it, and it held seven people. Well, there were uh, four of us and her. That made five, so we only picked up two other people. But I think she made about $2 a week for hauling us to school. Huh. It was a pretty good job, though, every morning and every night. You know, she had to come and get right. us, so. How long did that go on? Well, probably about... Um, four years, I would guess, because um, Dorothy was about that much younger than we were. And, and I went to school there until I was in seventh grade. Then, then you moved where? Moved to Indianapolis, down the south side of Indianapolis on Cruft Street, um, and I went to uh, School 34. That's where I graduated from grade school, School 34, down on Wade. And That's, you went to, went to where to, after that? And then I went to Tech High School. And you graduated? And, and I graduated from Tech High School and then went back and posted there a year because there weren't any jobs to be had. And uh, then during that year, I was 
living with a doctor that uh, and his wife that I had worked for during high school. And um, so they let me do some outside work. I worked, helped in a restaurant and um, ironed shirts. I did all kinds of things, made enough money to go to college a year. Of course, at that time, I think the tuition out in Dan Central was $75. What subject did you study there? It was just basic. Freshman year, you just had a basic course right. that you studied. English composition and that type of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. religion. It was a United Brethren Church, and so religion was one of the big yeah. subjects out there. Was that a good year? Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was the first time I'd ever really had any real freedom. I had been at home, and then uh, I had lived with this doctor and his wife, and I didn't, uh, I didn't date a whole lot. I had a few boyfriends, but not very many. And I didn't date the ones I had very much because I didn't have time. Yeah. Tell and me a little about, uh, about the doctor that you lived with and how you got connected up with, with the doctor. Well, the dean of the school liked me real well. And um, I was pretty unhappy at home because it was during the Depression and things were pretty bad there. And uh, I, um, I guess I had had some conversations with her, and she said, well, she thought, you know, that she could help me, and so she had, uh, at that time, they placed a lot of kids, you know, they helped them get a place to live if they wanted it, uh, right. and so that way it took part of the burden off of the family at home and helped me too, and I had, you know, lived in a nice home, and uh, they were nice to me. They treated me like I was part of their family. They had one little girl, and... Uh, so you were like a live-in babysitter, housekeeper, or whatever they office needed, girl. office girl. And um, the doctor was real nice. He was a chiropractor, and he used to help me with my subjects when I had problems, and especially with algebra. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was so you it was nice down up for there. three years. Yeah. What was they, his name? Doctor Allman. Doctor Allman. Yeah. And we, um, I used to travel with him in the summertime. I know I. I went to San Antonio, Texas one time with them and went down to uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee and uh, Davenport, Iowa. In fact, I had never been out of the state of Indiana until I lived with them and they, wherever they went they took me because I was their babysitter and their, uh, their handy gal. But I felt like part of the family. If they had guests, I ate the same table with them. I mean, I was never treated like I was a maid or anything like that. I was. Do you know anything about your, your uh, real mother, where they may have, where she may have come from, or anything about? Uh, your they were background? they were from Muncie. They were from Muncie, Indiana, and uh, um, my mother died, and my um, I got to know my grandmother um, in later years. In fact, it was after uh, well, when I was in college, I got to know her a little bit, and uh, she wanted me to come and live with her, and. Uh, she was going to send me to Ball State, but uh, being young like I was and having had a hard time like I did in growing up and in uh, going to school, I decided that uh, if she could offer me all that now and couldn't offer it me when I was young, that I didn't want any part of it. So I didn't follow through on that. All right. But you didn't know where it was. I like, met my yeah. grandmother. Yeah, I met my grandmother. And she, she lived to be close to 100 years old. Huh. She was a nice old lady, but uh, I couldn't help but resent her. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Bob, tell me a little about your growing up. Where were you born? Born in Greenwood, rural route out in the country. Crown Town, I think it was. I had two sisters, one older and one younger. One Juanita, the oldest one, Charlene's the youngest one. Because my mother and dad separated. That's right after my youngest sister was born. And me and my older sister went to live with my grandfather. You and your older sister? Yes. Where'd the younger sister go? She stayed with my mother. Okay. And they lived all around, right around Brown Town there for several years. And then my older sister me went over to my grandfather. He lived right north of Bargersville, about two miles on the Whiteland Road on a farm. Right. How big was that farm? 52 acres. 52? Yes. What was his main, what did he grow? Oh, corn, hay. Keep animals? Oats. I had horses and hogs, cows, 
had so a pet how pasture. How old were you when you went to live with them? I was about three. three. Do you remember much about No, I don't remember much when I was three, no. Yeah. As you got older, you got the older kids, the older you got, the more chores you got. Yes. Yeah, had to do things to. Then I, my sister left then, and she went back to live with my mother. Of course, then I was there by myself then, and for several years. Well, you were in touch with your mother and your, your dad over the years, you knew him? Yes. Dad, he worked in Indianapolis well, that's at Van Camp Hard Run Iron, and he, in the last few years, well, right before I got out of high school, several years before I got out of high school, he went to Kokomo and worked for that wholesale grill that he run it for him. He worked down here a few years for him, and they transferred him up there. He had a branch up there. He went up there and worked. You know where their families were from, your mom and dad's? Any history from the... My mother was adopted out of a... Her mother was a full-blooded Indian. And my, my, well, great great grandmother we call her. She adopted her when she was just a young youngster, and raised her right over at Browntown. All right. And my, uh, she died. My grandmother died. My mother got the farm, of course. Oh, yeah. But uh, then she remarried. Well, you remember about growing up around the farm, going to school and things. Yeah, I went to school at Bargersville, grade school. They had one through eight at grade school at Bargersville. But the school bus, we had school buses then. They had a regular school bus driver. He came and picked me up. I had to walk a quarter of a mile up the corner, and he'd get on the bus, and we'd go to school. And we'd, we'd walk a quarter of a mile and got home. Was it how, how big was the school, grades one through eight? Yes. There's about all, I would say there was about... 20 pupils in a grade, so, yeah. but they had first and second one room, third and fourth room, fifth and sixth room, seven, and the teacher just alternated, like he'd teach fifth and sixth for a while, and then he'd come on seventh and eighth for a while, and then they had the first year, and first and second, and third and fourth. Did you have a favorite subject or anything that just really turned oh, you on? No, you? I was pretty good in school, grade school. Yeah. I, spelling, my biggest what I went for mostly, we used to have what's called spelling bees. Right. And me and another girl, she generally beat me, but I generally take her down to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, of course, uh, they were pretty strict in that school. You, you studied, you didn't play around in it. You didn't allow that. Have any girlfriends while you in that school? No, not in that school. <laughs> your next school? What well, school? Center Grove. Center, Center, Center Grove High School. That was down. That's another it's out in the country, but it was a. He went from the. He had 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. That's where he went to high school at. And, of course, you. They, I don't know, my, in my graduating class, what it was, 32, wasn't he? Yeah. There's 32 in my senior class when I graduated in 1935. Yeah. There was 32 people. So if you graduated in 35, you didn't happen to have a 50th high school. We already had it, yes, last Did year. I'm glad that came out. Mm -hmm. Last year we had our 50th anniversary down in school. Went down and there was about eight that passed away, I think, out of school. They took our picture. They give us a plaque with our picture out of the yearbook on it, a plaque you hang on the wall with your senior picture on right. it, and when you graduated. And, uh, Did that you recognize good. anybody? Did you have a good well, time and meet? I recognized some of them, and a lot of them I didn't recognize. <laughs> they all knew him, though. They right? all knew me. Did they? Yeah, <laughs> everyone of them knew me, but I, some of them I had to ask. Big diversity and, and backgrounds and what's happened yeah. since you left school? No, we talked a little bit, not much. Most of them, well, a lot of them live right there yet, around Bargersville. They go to Florida in the winter, but they still live around there. I think the furthest one away lives down at Prince's Lake or Sweetwater Lake down there. Now, I lived, I met him, and he's about the furthest one away. Well, one lives at Danville, Indiana. Right. But most of them, rest of them right around Bargersville. Bring back a lot of memories. Yeah, we had a good time. And 
But we lost because the younger generation more or less took over after the dinner, the music, you could, couldn't even sit there, they just lift you off the chair, it's so loud, and that rock and roll stuff. So biggest part of the, my graduating class left, I think, after the, after the banquet, because they did it, you know, for years, see, my sisters was before. The oldest woman, there was one left that had been, what, Oh, what, 70 years out of school? Mm, yeah. Over 70 or 80, 80 years. One of the first people to ever graduate from the high school. My aunt and her, the only two left out of their senior class. Other and one of them was there. My aunt couldn't make it. She was not able. Right. But her and the other ones are the only two left out of the first class that graduated out of that school. That's but of course, now the school is, oh, Two or three thousand pupils right. because they got junior high and grade school and right. all that in there now. Well, this year coming up on a 50th reunion, aren't you? Has there been well, any talk about it? Well, uh, no, I'll tell you. Tech High School, when I graduated from Tech, Pete, there were um, 1,035 kids in that class. They had to take us out to uh, Butler Fieldhouse to graduate us. Uh, the reason for that was, um, as I told you, it was during the Depression. Right. There were no jobs to be had, and um, they were they did everything they could to keep kids in school, you know, so that they would stay straight. Right. And uh, so that's why the big class, there has never been a class like that since. And I have no contact with any of the kids. A lot of my life to contact. You've never run into anybody from that? No. Popular? It's been years and years and years right. since I've seen any of them. And yeah, that's uh, a pretty good size class for the for the 30s. And you the, better believe yeah. it. A thousand and thirty-five. That's yeah. a lot of a lot of. Kids. Interesting to find out which directions everybody mm -hmm. went over the years. And yeah, and at that time uh, we didn't have caps and gowns. But the girls all wore formals. Right. To graduate in, that was the first formal I ever owned. Right. And. Um, they, the boys dressed in a suit, and it was really beautiful, though, to see that many kids. All right. That's good. Do you have a boyfriend by that time, or are you still pretty No, much I, was, I was pretty much uh, busy all the time. Yeah. I didn't, uh, oh, I saw some that I liked, but I always had the problem, if I liked them, why they didn't notice me, and uh, <laughs> if they liked me, it wasn't to my choice, so. <laughs> I had a hard time getting together with the boys. Yeah, and you, you have how many sisters now, brothers and sisters? I have, I have one stepsister living, and uh, I see her more now than I've ever seen her since we've both been married. She lives uh, down south of Terre Haute, and uh, we see each other at least about once a month, have dinner with each other at her house or our house. And what's her and, name? Uh, Maxine. Maxine. Maxine okay. Fletcher. And, and, uh, her husband was a minister. He worked, she worked at Regency for a little yeah. bit. She, uh, they have mellowed a lot. They used to be real strict. And yeah, I remember <laughs> that you used to talk about that. Uh -huh. They've ha they have mellowed a lot, and they're still good Christian people, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But uh, they used to wouldn't cut hair or wear jewelry or any of these right. things, and now they, they're they different. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> has, has religion played a big part in either one of your lives? Not in our life. In my sister's life, you know, of course right. it has, but not in mine and Bob's. Right. Uh, you know, different different people are uh, brought up in one family, mm -hmm. and some people stay with the church, and some move in and out of it. Mm -hmm. We, uh, when you were growing up, did you did you uh, like sports? Play at any sports? Uh, Oh, I always liked gym, uh, you know, when I was in school and played volleyball and the different things, but I never uh, participated. At that time, girls didn't participate in intramural type yeah. things, but uh, in during our gym classes, and I uh, always liked outside things. I loved nature. And How about you, Bob? Oh, I played a lot of basketball as a kid. Did your yeah. school have a team? Oh, yes. School had one of the best teams was. Was that because you were on the team? No, or? no, I wasn't on the team. <laughs> I played on the second team for a couple of years, and then I was student manager for a couple of years. Okay. 
and so you were active with sports yeah, in the school. Yeah, so. the basketball. That's basketball. all they had was basketball. Yeah. Football but, wasn't real no, big in those well, days. Well, wasn't no football at that time. No. Right. Today there is, but not then. All we had was basketball. No baseball, nothing. Just basketball. That's all. And I was. I went to all the games. I kept. More or less, like student, I kept the shots they took and how many they made, and then I helped gather up the basketball they practiced with. And Players weren't as big then as they are no. now, were they? Just, uh, and you didn't have all these warm-up suits and stuff like that. You didn't have none of that. You just had a jacket, you know, just a like a jogging suit jacket. That's all they ever wore. They didn't right. have all this fancy uniform then. Got a lot of fun to participate in that type of thing. Oh, yes. Made a lot of friends. Yes. Got to travel around some. Well, I go to all the basketball games. Right. I rode on the bus with the players all, all the games. And they had, well, let's see, there was Morgantown, Edinburgh, Nineveh, Union, Whiteland, Clark. Most they played county schools then. They didn't right. go out of the county either. It was all county. Right. And they had a county tournament, of course, and you had the it's like they have now, but the right. county tournament was first. That was Franklin, and of course Franklin always won it because they were the biggest. Right. Whiteland was good, but those days is just like uh, it is today. Right. If you had a good player, Franklin got his dad a job down in Franklin, so right. he'd go to Franklin. Right? <laughs> George Crow was one of them, right. the Crow Boys. Right. You everybody know the Crow Boys. All right. They all played on Franklin High School basketball team, but he, he lived off the county, and Franklin always got him down there, got the whole family down there. There must have been 15 guys in his family. Yeah. And George and Ray were really good. But uh, the rest of them was less mediocre players. Yeah. That's all right. Did you ever play musical instrument? No. Did you ever play guitar, trumpet, no. trombone? No, no. Violin? No, nothing. Yeah. Radio. <laughs> radio. We played radio real well. Huh? A battery-operated Atwater Kent. I'll tell you what it was. <laughs> How about you, Lucy? Did you ever play a piano no. or a musical? Playing no. a band at all or anything? No. Couldn't carry a tune to Buck and still can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, though. I love music. Yeah. I love music. I love singing and but I never could participate because I just couldn't carry two. Not, not very good <laughs> unless you had a, something cold to drink. Right? Oh, yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought I could. <laughs> yeah. When did you two meet now? Tell me when you two got together. Now, we know what happened up through high school. Did you meet while you was in school? Or no. Out of school. The 19th. We were out of school. 40, wasn't it? Forty what? And now you're supposed to know exactly. Now, I know Lucy's going to tell me. <laughs> no, I'll exactly tell you. Right. I, I always remember the the anniversary, the date, because it's May the first. <laughs> okay. About 1940, I think. 40 or 39. Was it planned or happened? No. 1101. Wasn't it? Capitol Avenue. Yeah. We lived in a rooming house. 11. The Capitol Avenue. We know where that. That's all black down there now, or isn't there? Maybe even by now. That's not even there now. But we, um, his mother and younger sister and him lived in this uh, rooming house, and I moved there. They were like apartments, but then they called them rooming houses. Right. And uh, I think that's where we met, wasn't it? And we went together quite a while, and then we decided to get married. <laughs> what now? This is a 1940? Right. You was working regular? Yeah. Worked at filling station. I worked at filling station. station. She worked at paper container. Paper container. Yes. What did they do? Made paper boxes. Paper boxes. I ran a printing press. They, you, uh, some of the boxes had printing on. I worked in the print print shop in the print run printing press. Right. And Bob worked at the filling station. I think he made how much a month? When we started out there, I made eighty five dollars a month. How many hours? 85 60 hours, hours a 60 week. 60 hours a week. <laughs> 60 hours a week. 10 hours a day, 6 days a week. Then I got an advancement. I made 100 and something a month plus bonuses. We got a bonus every month. A little bit didn't amount to a whole lot. 
Then when I made the, got the advancement, I was what they call the shift man. I carried the money. I worked 12 hours a day and four hours tomorrow. Then I was off for a day. But you worked at 10 to 10 and 6 to 10. Okay. Then you got off at 10 o'clock, you had to make out your report, and he was off till 10 o'clock the next day. So he's off 24 hours. While you was working there and, and Lucy's working at the container place, you yeah. guys got together and dated. And yeah. What'd you do for entertainment in 1940 in Indianapolis? Drink beer. <laughs> Drink a lot of beer. Huh? Drink beer and listen and, to and talk music. <laughs> and Kessler whiskey. That's all we could afford, Kessler. <laughs> Did you go out to do this, or did you stay oh, yeah. around the rooms? No, uh, Cap 10 Tavern. Talk to your friends? No, was Cap 10 Tavern, 10th and Capitol. <laughs> we there for, spent a lot of time down there. <laughs> or the, what was that one out on 16th Street? Chicken? No. No? 16th and Montcalm. Yeah, Remember? I forget what the name of that one was. But those were the days of the neighborhood taverns, too. Oh, yeah. You, know, where, yeah. Where you used to you take your kids in those. When Butch right. was little, we used to take him down there with us, and uh, it didn't hurt him. Boy hardly drinks a drop. No. I burned the uh, You could take your f family in and right. uh, sit around. You knew everybody. It was neighborhoods. Yeah, and right. Of course, I belonged to three overnight joints. <laughs> with a cost a quarter to join. Cost you a quarter to join. Yeah. And what, for, what for, were they for? Well, after the taverns closed, you go there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Quarter. I so you could go and play cards or just drink, drink or mostly. dance? Or drink. Oh, they had a band there. You could dance with one, too. Of course, it's, we knew every bootleg joint in town, too. So, you know, this was, was when we were dating yeah, that's when and we were. very first married, but then after we had, uh, you know, got three kids, then we didn't go to the taverns. No. We played drink cards home. every weekend and drank beer. Drank at home. Right. And even made our own part of the time. Now, you, were you in the service? Yes. You were in, you went to war. When did you go in there? I went in 1942. Yeah. Yeah. November the 4th, 1942. And I got out in October 1945. So you went to, you went to boot camp for, what, eight weeks? No, I went to boot camp for five days. Five days? Yes, in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And I was transferred to Madison, Wisconsin, to X Field. I went to radio school for 26 weeks. Then they made me an instructor till for about a year. I was up as an instructor. Then I went to Jefferson Barracks for 26 days. Then I went to Europe for, till 1945. <laughs> Now this was this was before or after you got married. That was right. Uh, I went in the service November, and Jacqueline was born in September. And Janet wasn't born until after he got out of the service. But was already right. born, of course. Mm -hmm. But right. uh, Jacqueline was born in September. She was just a baby when I went to service. She was just real you, young. You, were you drafted, or did you? Yeah, I, I drafted. drafted. I started enlist in. I started enlist before I got married in 1940. I went down the list. Me and two other guys, and and they they took them, but I was turned down for heart trouble. I had a heart murmur, they said. Right. And a year later, they took me. Now you two, when, after you met, you what, tell, tell me all about this now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot. <laughs> tell me about the first kiss. Uh, <laughs> you remember? I know the women always remember. Tell she me. might. I don't huh? Well, I don't remember particularly the first kiss, but I thought he was about the cutest thing I ever walked. Did yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Bob? Well, you love at first sight? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> more or less. You knew that was it, huh? Yeah, we had a lot of fun together, I'll tell you. Two We've had a good life. Uh, we lived in that rooming house then, yes. We were still in that rooming house. When he went in the service. Yeah. When I went in the service, we were still living in that room. And when Jacqueline was born, I took her to the hospital three times. <laughs> and every time I took her up, she'd come back home. Yeah. But uh, we still lived in the same place, left in the capital. Then after Jacqueline was born, you went to service. No, I went, went to service. Then she moved to. South side of Indianapolis, down to I moved down Union Street. 735 Union Street. She okay, rented the house. Okay, you 
rented a house down there. Yeah. While Bob was gone. Yeah, thirty-five dollars a month. It was a nice house. My mother came and stayed with us while Bob was gone, so, and she took care of uh, Butch and Jackie. And you continued so working I could work. While, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I worked at Continental Optical Company right. during the war. What happened over in Europe, Bob? Was there any war tales to tell about? Were you stationed in England? Or? I was in England for, oh, I don't know, I went to school there 26 weeks. No, 16 weeks, I guess it was. And then they transferred me to Troop Care Command down at Exeter, England. And they said that you're going to be a radio operator now. And here's your plane. And gave me an airplane. Then we went to Reims, France. We were stationed there for quite a while. Then we took us up to Luxembourg for all up there for a couple, three months. But all I had to do was we hauled gasoline and supplies to the infantry. See any action? Or just well, I had 26 combat missions, what they call combat missions. I was in the only really combat mission I was in the, when I went over the Rhine. But the rest of them, they all, they're all classified as combat missions anytime you go in a combat zone. There's 26 actually combat missions I had, what they called them. You get shot at in here? Oh, yes. Yeah, close calls? We had several flak holes in the airplane. I never had one come real close to me. Nobody on my plane. I went in the hospital in, during the Bascone, and the guy that took my place, though, on my plane got shot down, and they killed him. He got killed. But I was over in England in the hospital. And Why were you in the hospital? I had strep throat and quinsy. Right. And I was in England. I was going to leave over in England when I got it, and I put me in an English hospital over there. And I was in there during that period. Well, we had a good time. I spent a lot of time in school. And yes, flew and a few I, I flew a lot. I flew. We flew every day. We, I've been to Nice and Cannes and Italy and Belgium and Holland and all that all over with us. Were you? Was the war over when you came home, or was you just? Or was yeah, the war just ended war? in Europe. And I came home right after the war ended. I came home in July after the war ended in Europe for discharge because I had enough points for having children and my service and all. I was supposed to be discharged out of Atterbury, and I went down there and they said, no, you're not going to be discharged. You're classified essential. You go home for 30 days and report out to Santa Ana, California, and you're going over to Japan. So I finally came home and I stayed a while. I mean, right before I got ready to go to Santa Ana, you know, the Japan gave up. But I still had to go to Santa Ana, California. And I was out there until October, last October, wasn't it, when I got I so. finally, and they finally discharged me out there and gave us some money to say, go on home now if you want to. It'll be the best way you can. So, uh, so you really didn't do anything in California, but no. just wait. Just wait. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. Okay. But I was supposed to go to Japan. And I've read several articles on that. They had a great big paratroop drop plan for Japan. That's what they had in mind. So you would have been a radio operator yeah. on a, one of the planes yeah. dropping the heads you, you know, had that continue? Yeah. Did I suppose take train on a C-46? which I'd already had, because we had some already. and But still, it uh, made me go up there. But I never did have to go to Japan. Yeah. Did you write Lucy every day while he was gone? Yep. <laughs> Practically every day. I, I had, this is, this is the honest truth, I had 1,500 letters that when we moved from um, where we lived down on um, Union Street, we moved out to Lawrence when we bought a house out there, I burned up 1,500 letters. That Why I'd would gotten. you burn up such history? They were they were so beautiful, but I just uh, I thought, well, I had him then. Yeah. I didn't need didn't the letters. Need the letters right? <laughs> I had uh, him. <laughs> but I didn't write but, much uh, in Luxembourg because I couldn't. He he wrote about every day, and I wrote we, about every day. We, because, we uh, wrote a lot of letters. We was on detached service up there, and just didn't have time to write. He's flying on flu food three times right. a day, flying about 14 hours a day, right. and he only had about 10 hours in the sleeping. Yeah. But, uh, so 
Lucy held down the home fires and yeah. raised a couple of kids. And yeah. With my mother's help. With your mother's help. I could, uh, you know, it, I couldn't have done it without her. Yeah. I couldn't just leave my kids with anybody. Right. Well, it would have been and, tough uh, years for anybody during the war. Right. And, uh, and she was right there and, you know, lived in the house with us. And then when Bob came home, why she, you know, she moved out. But uh, then you she, she liked Bob better than she did me anyhow. But, yeah. <laughs> She always said, I never, I've never had a cross word with my son-in-law. <laughs> How long did you live there after the war? Uh, on Crest Street? No. I mean, he, on uh, Union? He was there, lived About. there. We lived there until 1955. Yeah. Jackie was no born. Uh, Janet was born there. there. Uh -huh. In 55. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, then where did you move? Lawrence. 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 And that's when I started working at Regency. Well, I worked at Bridgeport Brass a year before I went to service. I quit the film station and went out there for a year at Bridgeport Brass. Right. Then I, that's where I left there to go to service. Yeah. Then after I got out of the service, I went back out there and worked, but didn't work any. Because they weren't running. Then that's when they said he's going to lay me off, and I told them they couldn't because the job I had was still there. And, and the guy was on it was not a veteran, so but I argued with him a little bit, and they said, well, you can't have it. And I said, well, I ain't going to argue with you. I'll just tell you I'm going up to BA in the morning. Then when I went home, a guy called me and said, you go down to Action Saw in the morning and get a job. And I did. That's where I was for a while, <laughs> seven years. Now, you were gone during a uh, little bit when Butch and Jackie were growing up in the war. Yes. Lucy may not have told everything about those kids, but was there any, <laughs> tell me about some of the crazy things, kids always do crazy things. So what, what sticks out in your mind that Butch was the oldest and, and probably the most active being a boy? What, did he do crazy things during those years? Oh yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty much of a guy. He played a lot, he loved sports and he loved to, uh, we lived right across the street from a school, schoolyard. They went to school number six. And we lived right kind of across the street, so he participated in a lot of ball games over there. And well, he was an active boy. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he loved. He loved. Had a lot. Did he do anything just real fun things uh, that you remember that just? No, he was always. He really was kind of conservative was as he? he grew up. Yeah, he was pretty conservative. He didn't get into a lot of things that a lot of kids get into. Yeah. And him or Jackie, the one. Jackie was. Uh, yeah. My kids did everything that they did wild was. After they were grown. After they were grown. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> so where did they go to school? And a Butch would have been in starting school in 1948 or 49 or 50 and that. Yeah, life. well, Butch went to uh, school six until he was in the sixth grade. In fact, he and Jackie both did until, and then Butch went to um, school 22, which is on South Meridian. Yeah, and then he went to Harry Wood, which was uh, is now a trade school down there, I believe. Right. But it was a high school at the time. And uh, then we moved to Lawrence when he was a sophomore in high school. And so, Jackie was in the seventh grade when we moved to Lawrence. So both of them finished their school years in, in Lawrence? Well, yeah, all three of the kids graduated from Lawrence yeah. Central. Lawrence Central. Lawrence Central. Okay. Uh -huh. And that was... Uh, was the big high school there then, or was that? That, uh, little Jackie, high school. Jackie and Butch graduated from the little high, high school, school, and Janet graduated from the new one. Yeah. And then the old one became the uh, junior high. Junior high for yes. a while, I think mm -hmm. that's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Now, but that was a nice place to raise kids. Yes, it, it really was. was. Now that was the first house that, that you that actually, we owned. that you mm -hmm. owned. Yeah. yeah, right. And you were about how old when you, Late 30s. Late 30s when you yeah. bought your first house? I was 38. I'm a year older than Bob. I'm, I was 38 and uh, when I started working at Regency, and I started working there two or three months after we moved to Lawrence. My mother right. moved out there with us, so I had to live in babysitter again, right. <laughs> and I was able to go to work. Yeah. Otherwise, took, I couldn't. Took both of you to, to work to support yeah. the house, and yeah. mm -hmm. then you, how did you get downtown? You, got, you worked downtown, right? I worked at the uh, Acton Saw Works for seven years. Then I, they, you know, they sold out. They was going to move. I got rumors of it, and then I went up. To, my neighbor there was a Jewish boy, and his dad had electrical contracting shop. 
on Central Avenue. So I went up there and I worked part time. He had a fire or something. I was up there cleaning up a little bit, you know, straightening stuff out. And then he finally just hired me. Said, "Want me to come to work for him?" And I worked there. Well, so I went to work at Regency until 1966. 1966. Well, he worked. He served his apprenticeship yeah, for a dollar yeah. an hour. There. And they told him he could work as many hours as he needed to support his family. So, okay. so and at that time, <laughs> at that time, we were still living. When he went to work there, we were still living on, down on, Union, on Street. Union Street, and I didn't work. So he worked like 70 hours a week for several years. And then when we moved to Lawrence, why he was became a full-fledged, uh, well, before we moved out there, he became a full-fledged electrician and uh, was able, you know, to make enough money that we, I didn't absolutely have to go to work, but, you know, we didn't ever have a new car, and right. there were things that we wanted. We needed furniture. You get a new house, you wanted to have new stuff in it. Right. So, uh, so you went to work, and you were working where when you went out to like Electrician. You was working as the electrician. Yeah. And you had a you rode the bus or had a car? No, I had a car. I drove back. What car did you have? Well, I had an old Chevrolet and well, had a Ford Pontiac and an old Pontiac. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the funny thing about the car is, Pete. When I went to work at Regency, of course, I went. To, I started to work there for ninety-five cents an hour, and uh, I was kind of like my mother, I guess. I was always laying back just a little bit of money, and uh, so I finally managed into after a year or so maybe two, I finally managed to have $400 in a savings account that Bob really didn't know about. <laughs> and accidentally, he saw my savings account book one time, and that Pontiac fell apart. <laughs> well, it was like, it was fell apart, too. <laughs> and that's when we bought our first new car. <laughs> our first new one. What kind of car was that? It was a Ford. 55 Ford. 55 Ford. Ford. And, uh, yeah, that thing fell apart, and Bob said, he thought that's what made him so tired because when he went to work, he never knew what he was going to get home or not. <laughs> <laughs> that 55 Ford was a classy car. Oh, that was, that the was first a first real modern car. Yeah, there. It was 55. Yeah, we loved it. But we've had a lot of new ones since then, really. <laughs> yeah. now, it seems like they all fall apart after about three or four years. Yeah. Um, so you bought. Uh, bought the car. You went to work for Regency, and, and did you walk to work? Or oh, yeah. Well, I was just, only 10 minutes from work. Right. So you just yeah. walked to work for, right. for several years. And, mm -hmm. Right. And, and then finally we ended up, we had two cars. I had an old Chevrolet. Where did I get that old Chevrolet? Bought on somebody pretty cheap. Yeah. I drove, it was a good Chevrolet, though. I drove it to work. And we bought a 57. And she had the oh. Monza. We had one of them Corvair Monzas. Right. She had that. She drove it to work. But that old Chevrolet, I had it was a real good car. I mean, it was an old car, but real good. I mean, you work out it now. Now, you worked as an electrician until when? 66. 66. And then why did you leave there? Well, Regency called me up and offered me a good job in North Carolina, and I just took it. <laughs> as long as Lucy was with you. No, <laughs> well, no, Dwayne, they was going to transfer her down. They wanted her to go down there anyway when Burner was there. Right. And I had done a job for Regency when I worked at the electrical company, when they bought the machine shop on Franklin Road. And when I got down to that job, that's when they called me up on me coming to work for them. And I said, well, that all depends on how much you're going to pay us. So I know it was on a Sunday. Gunzelman, I'd done some work for him down at his house first. Right. And then Bernard and the Gunzelman met me over on a Sunday. And of course, they had little scotch and stuff, and they started <laughs> drinking a little bit. <laughs> They finally want to know what I was going to do. And I said, well, you never told me what you're going to pay yet. So they told me it was a lot more than making. So. <laughs> that ended that argument. That ended the argument. So you moved to North Carolina for? On January the 1st. To Raleigh, yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, that's when I, that's 1966. Yeah. Well, you gave uh, Halpern yeah, the notice. notice. Yeah. He told me he couldn't come till he I think it's September till right. January I worked. September, October, November, just four months. Right. Then I give her a chance to get somebody, and she never did do it. But I told her I wouldn't be back after the first of January, and I didn't go back. So you went to her, you were already down in Raleigh. No. No, we went, oh, together. Together. went together. Mm -hmm. yeah. By then, the kids were through school. Yeah. Janet had graduated yeah. from high school, and yeah. so we left Jackie and Janet and in Butch the house. There. And, and Butch. And Butch yeah. finally moved in, too. Yeah. Her mother died, and 
My mother died and my dad died while I was down in Raleigh, 66, right after we moved. Your dad, mother died first, didn't she? Your well, dad died while we were in Raleigh, yeah, and mother I, and your mother died when well, we got we back. Stick. Yeah, when we got back. Yeah, your mother was with us. Year. Her mother went to Raleigh with us. Her mother did. Uh, first time she'd ever ridden on an airplane in her life. Uh, she was so thrilled. Yeah. She talked about it till the day she died. That's when Regency had that big plane haul, 15 people. Right. It was. Uh, she was the oldest person. That pilot said she was the oldest person he'd ever ridden. And I think Steve Kendall had his baby on that same plane. They had the oldest and the youngest that they had ever flown. So you went to Raleigh to uh, as, as what job? Quality control. Quality control. Mm -hmm. And you I went in charge of maintenance. Charge of maintenance, and you yeah. worked there for. One year, about a little over a year. Just about a year. Thirteen months, be exact. Yeah. That's where we met you, Pete. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when they closed up February, wasn't it? Well, I think that's when I left there. They closed it up a lot before that. But you know, we stayed around there. We left in uh, January. Well, I left in February. I stayed and around we there. Stayed another month. Yeah. And then, I think it was in February we left there. That was a good year. Mm -hmm. You know. For yeah. We had a lot of fun down there. It was a nice, a nice place to nice live. Place to live. That was a nice place to live, I'll tell you. Nice people to work right. with. They were some of the nicest people that. Uh, it was nice. That that. I really liked it. And, uh, but I, you know, I, I never really felt at home there. Home was always back in. Oh, you had your children. You yeah. had your roots back here. Right. With children. And right. Kids were tearing up the house and partying <laughs> while you was gone. And oh, I guess they had some good times. Uh, According to my neighbors, <laughs> they had some good times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But of course, we'd had some good times in that house yeah, too, yeah. before and after. I mean, you you know, in the early fifties, and you were both young and struggling with kids and trying to survive. And what uh, what did you do on on Friday and Saturday night in, in the Play house? Poker? Saturday Play night. poker. Saturday drink night. Beer. Saturday night. night. Saturday <laughs> night. Play poker and drink beer. Play right. penny ante poker, and we'd chip in by a couple cases of beer, sometimes three cases. And we'd wherever we went. We took the kids with us, and whoever came to our house brought their kids, and we'd, they'd go sleep on the couch or upstairs on the All beds, right. and when they got ready to go home, you packed them up and took them with you. Never had a babysitter. Yeah. We'd have potato chips or something, beer at all. That's all we never. But we had fun. <laughs> penny Annie, we just played Penny Annie. Both of you have grown up during a period of time that like technology's changed a lot. Oh uh, my. They had early radios, and you mentioned battery powered radios. When I was a kid, the we had a Atwater Kent battery operator. It had a right. copper wire run about 300 feet up on two poles. That was the antenna. That was your antenna. Yeah. And then radios refined over the yeah. years. Oh, you yeah. were a radio operator, and probably the stuff you dealt with in Europe was the most sophisticated yeah. available at that time. This is so obsolete now, it wouldn't be funny. Right. <laughs> and uh, then you. Television came yeah. along in the late 40s and early 50s. When did you get your first television? Down on Union Street before we moved to Lawrence, about 54, wasn't it? Well, it's been three, maybe 53, 53. 53, 54. I remember the first one I ever looked at, this Jewish family that lived next door to us. Uh, we lived in a double. And they, they lived another half. And the first TV I ever saw was a little four-inch deal. And we all gathered around a desk over there, and we watched that little. Right. Then we got a nine-inch. It was a 9 inch. Uh, no, 12 inch. My 12 Dink, inch. Dink got the first one over my mother and lived over there. Remember? He yeah. bought one. We used to go over there and watch it. And the first one we bought was a 12 inch. 12 inch Philco. It's Philco. That's on Union Street here. Yeah. I remember when Janet was little, uh, Bob's mother and my mother wanted to see, wanted me to take her up to see Santa Claus and so she'd be on TV. And she just didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. So uh, finally I set her down, because they were real anxious, and uh, I set her down and I asked her, she just a little thing, and I said, well, Janet, why don't you want to go up and see Santa Claus? And she said, well, she said, if I got in there, how would I ever get out? <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't understand that. She just couldn't understand. Well, of course, I don't understand it yet, but uh, <laughs> she, she thought she would be inside of that thing. <laughs> well, now that, uh, you know, you went to to Raleigh for a year and came back and your kids were grown. And, uh, who was the first to get married? Butch. Butch was the oldest, Butch, so uh -huh. that's where he got married yeah. first. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he had Scotty and then he was in the Marine Corps out in Lake Mead, out in Nevada. Right. 
Las Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> and he divorced her, and they got divorced. And he lived here for a couple more years? No, uh, for a while, yeah. Years. And he went to, well, he did. He went to Indiana Central when he. That's where he met Carolyn. Yeah, he went to Indiana Central for a while. And then they got married, and they, got married. they ended up out in uh, Nevada. He went, he went to Ball State, then he went back to Indiana Central, then he went to the Las Vegas school. And he graduated That's where he graduated from, the University of Las Vegas. And Jackie lived in California for a while. Yeah, yeah she, that's where Todd was born. She went to California. Nevada first. When she got out of high school, she went out and stayed with him for a year, with a year. Him, about a year. Yeah. Then she went to California. Yeah, and she moved back, and yeah. eventually she went to work for Regency. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she worked downtown to Times for a good little bit. Then she? Indianapolis yeah. Times, yeah. And then she worked at uh, an employment agency. A Snelling and Snelling, she worked there a while. And then they hired, Regency hired her from there yeah. as personnel director. And she married Steve Stephen. Yeah. Hoffman. I remember Floyd told me one time, he said, he'd already warned Jackie. <laughs> told her there was a good looking engineer coming in there and it was hands off. <laughs> right. So never, never challenge her like that. So <laughs> no. He couldn't have done any better if she'd have tried. Yeah, isn't that the truth? That's true. He's been great. And then Janet, being the youngest, the baby of the crowd, she graduated, and she was in the '60s when she graduated from high school. Yeah, well, then she worked up at American States for uh, a couple of years, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Right. And then her and Cecil got married. And Cecil, he, he still worked at the phone company. Yeah. He works for AT&T AT now. AT&T now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and they pretty they good life up in up oh, in Carlisle. they do fine. Yeah. yeah, they do fine. They raise are raising two kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eleven and fifteen. Eleven and fifteen. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Yes. Yeah. So over the years, you both have done a fair amount of work and different things. Lived a few different places and raised three kids. You retired and. 67, wasn't it? 68. 68. Retired in 78. 78. 78. Yeah, oh, 70. I'm sorry. 78. Yeah. 70. The years are getting by you. Yeah. Oh, they 70. are. I, tell you. I can't believe it. We bought that place in 72. We retired in 78 again. Yeah. For everybody listening, they bought a lot down yeah. in Rockville on the uh, Raccoon. Raccoon Lake. They had a trailer that you had yeah. for a few years while you built your home. Mm -hmm. And uh, wish you had. Do you have a picture of that? We put it on camera. No, not Show with a picture me. of it. You not with me. Picture? No. No, not with me. Shoot that right up for <laughs> all your historians out in the audience. Yeah. And uh, beautiful place. And you're tired and traveled to Florida or wherever you want to go now yeah. and then. Yeah. You've been traveling last year. Where did you go? Went to Hawaii. How was your first trip, right? For how long? Two weeks in Hawaii. Two weeks. Well, we had taken. The first year after we uh, retired, we took a trip to California and went out to see Butch with Jackie and Janet and Steve, you know, the whole bunch of us. Right. Uh, we camped and went out there. In fact, we've taken a camping trip almost every, all but one year, I think. Well, we went. We went to World's Fair. Uh, we camped and went to the World's Fair, the three families together. I mean, you took it. When we had the Red Dodge van, we went. California down through Texas, Mexico, remember? Just yeah. me and her. 6,500 miles. Yeah. And We've taken a trip or, every year. Every year. We go every year someplace. Yeah. The trip to Hawaii was pretty nice. Yes, it is. Uh, Beautiful. Go surfing. A lot of pretty girls. No. Bob, Bob, tell me about the girls. <laughs> too, too many girls. Oh, you did on the beach. On the beach, this is all. I <laughs> we spent more time running around yeah. looking at things that we. Um, Wanted to see, you know, historical type things and mountains. They and had a big volcano that was uh, so crazy last year. Yeah, we saw that. that. We, we flew top over of it. Did you? Mm -hmm. We flew over that. We visited uh, all of the islands. We, we flew over all the islands and we sat down on three, three of them. We went with a tour. Well, wasn't the tour group either. There was see, two, four, six, eight, ten, wasn't it? Ten people from Rockville. Right. And we, that we knew. That they got this thing together, and we went out there, and there was 10 of us on the, in the bunch. Right. There was 14 all together, 14. but 10 from Rockville. Yeah, 10. And they had reservations made and everything, and we went to
went to Frisco first, and we stayed overnight in Frisco. I was on our own, no. And then we got that was on the because plane. of the strike. The plane and the uh, United strike. Was and strike. every day they had a tour. This thing had a place to take you around if you wanted to go. And I think we missed two. Is all we missed. Now we took all the rest of them, and one of them was the plane ride over all the islands. We was going all day. And then the other one we missed was something I wasn't very interested in. Oh, we missed the, we didn't go to the dinner play on the boat. We wasn't seen the, who was that entertainer we wouldn't see in that nightclub? Her, Harrington? Her, Harrington? Harrington. Pat Harrington. Pat, okay. Yeah, we went to see him instead of taking the dinner cruise. Then we went and saw the, went to Pearl Harbor and yeah. saw the monument over there for the, that was, one day they had a tour someplace we didn't want to go and so we spent with my niece's daughter. She took us around all over Hawaii. Took us out to dinner. And She's in the Navy there, huh. over there. That was nice trip. Nice. Drank a lot of Mai Tais. <laughs> What's next? We were with a fun group. Yeah. That's yeah. good. What's next on the agenda? Well, we're going um, after Christmas and New Year's is over this year while we're going to go back to Florida and hopefully if Bob is feeling as well as he can, does now even why we're going on to California again but we're going down the most southern route and see if we can find a place we like better than Florida that we might want to spend uh, a little bit of time in the winter. Texas, I got Texas in my mind. I don't know yet. You know Grandma can't leave yet because she still has to help raise these grandkids. <laughs> She, th she thinks that, you know, they might happen to need her. They don't need her very often, but she wants to be there when and, they need uh, her. <laughs> Johnny Winstead came in the store did one day she really? to say hi. We went uh, to visit them, did yeah. she tell She you? told me about uh, that. Yeah. Said she just couldn't believe that uh, <laughs> Bob and Lucy rolled uh, up. And, yeah. Uh, Talk about she it. was just tickled to death. And yeah, she I just, know. She talked about that. Her daughter comes in the store. And oh, does Jane, she? Yeah, Jane, Jane. brought her over to uh -huh. see me one day. I'll be done. Talk about a uh, godforsaken place. I said, it's the summertime. I'll tell you, there ain't nothing there. <laughs> but she says, in the winter, you can't move. Yeah. They just nothing. love it down there. They just love it. But it is, it is desert, desert, desert. Yeah, that's... Uh, she said she really liked it. Oh, they oh, do. They, 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 love, they love, love it. it. He practically runs the town. Jack yeah. does. Her husband, he's the general superintendent, I think, of everything that goes on down there. <laughs> That's good. That's uh, so some of the places you're going, you're going to travel some more. and We're going to California, and then we, we would like, Bob wants to go to Alaska. One day, One day we'll go to Alaska. I'm trying to go to Alaska before I die. And I've never been northeast. He has, but I haven't. Well, we I might go there, too. Service. But I'd like to go northeast. Uh, I think then we'll have the United States pretty well have done. Have it pretty well covered. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been in every state now. Have but Alaska. Alaska. But Alaska. I ain't got there yet. Took me a long time to get to Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> we have a neighbor that's retiring in a couple of years, and he's going to buy a motor home, and he wants to go to Alaska, too. So and we get along pretty good, so we we're thinking we might go together. Take turns driving. And yeah, and, and yeah. share the expenses. Share the expenses. Mm -hmm. be, yeah. yeah. Well, We're thinking uh, about thinking real strong in that direction. They like to cook out. Now they went to the World's Fair. They got friend the motorhome went with some people, but they wouldn't eat in the trailer. They'd go out to the restaurant every night and eat. So the people they went with. Eat people are the real common, and he liked to eat out. So we'll probably eat. the biggest expense we'd have be gasoline. So these are you know the, the things that that you yeah. like to do. Some of the things you want to do is travel more. And yes, uh -huh. we'd love to travel. Watch your kids and grandkids grow up and yeah. do well in, mm -hmm. in life. But uh, what are some of the things that, that you've seen a lot in your life? What are some of the things that you would like to see in your lifetime come to come to pass? Things that, that would happen to mankind or the world or great inventions or things that... that mm -hmm. Well, the main thing I'd like to see is... Um, I'd like to see all this turmoil between us and Russia settle down because we seem to be the, the two that aggravate each other and uh, I think if we could come to terms with each other I don't think uh, either one of us would have anything to fear with all the rest of the world put together. I think the most amazing thing I've ever seen though is Epcot. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a 
that's vision of the future, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As far as engineering feats, so though, that's the greatest place we've ever had. When you can sit in a theater that holds 500 people and them seats take off and ride you all around man, that building and bring you right back and put you right back where you started from and everything is so realistic, it's pitiful. I mean, I've never seen, you ever been to Epcot? No, I've never been. That is amazing. Rose and her mother and sister are going next spring. I never, you would enjoy it. I would never believe it. It's, I think the men appreciate it more. Now, I enjoyed it tremendously, but now Janet, she wouldn't give you two cents for it. And she went because she's not interested in that kind of stuff. But uh, I was uh, interested in it and liked it, but I didn't understand, you know, all the things that I was seeing. But I think that every man should have the opportunity to see that. It's just marvelous. You should go. You talk about a computer room, Pete. You, you would that, go, you'd go crazy. That oh, computer man. room is 300 feet long, I think, and they're stacked up <laughs> as you can see. Well, that's you can a, participate in a lot of things. You know, it's just, it's fantastic. Amazing. I've never seen nothing like it. What are your predictions for the future? Just predict. What, what do you predict? We're in the prediction, not, not just what you want to see, but what do you think might happen in the future? Well, I really don't know this. Well, I, I really think that uh, the time will come when our our grandchildren will travel in space. I really think they will. These communist flying airplanes. Mm -hmm. right? I think they will. I think there will really be, uh, I think it will have its place up there, and I think that things that can happen up there uh, that we couldn't handle here on Earth, and uh, I think they will be a part of it. Uh, I don't agree know, but the, yes, I agree with that, but I think that it's going to be a time in the near future when things are going to be pretty tough again, the way they're going. When you get two trillion dollars in debt and don't have no money, I think something's got to happen. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be, but something's got to happen. It'll be interesting to watch anyway. But well, you better believe it. From wherever we all happen to be yeah. at that time. If you're around here to see it, but I think two trillion dollars is that's jobs of money. When you can't make government payroll and and just keep printing it just because you need it, that's not real good as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I'm not much of a predictor, but... Well, do you know there's still people on this earth that don't believe that we landed men on the moon? Yes. Know Bob's that. sister's one. Charlene, she absolutely does not believe that. You couldn't make her believe it. Another thing... My husband believes it. She doesn't believe it. She said there is no way. There are people that think that we're done in the studios mm -hmm. and out on the deserts. Yeah. yeah, Charlene really believes that. She says, they're, you know, it's just, they've just made us believe that. Another <laughs> thing I think is going to happen one of these days, that the shuttle's going to get in trouble. We Some, do. Do. One day. We have been very fortunate. Very lucky so far. I think they keep doing so many of them. One day I think something might happen. I don't hope it don't, but it's very... Very possible. Let's go down here to the end. Before we before we end this thing, <laughs> I want to ask each of you, and we'll start with Lucy. What special message do you have for your family, people that may be watching this tape? Well, all all of us need to just keep loving and caring for each other, our family and our friends. And uh, I think in my lifetime, I have really loved and cared for a lot of people and uh, the friendships that I've made have more than paid me for anything I could ever have put into it. I think it's, that's the secret to life is loving and caring. Yeah. To me that's that's the secret to a happy life. Beautiful message. Bob? That's about the same thing. I feel about the same way. Another thing. I, did you read Billy Sunday in the paper Sunday? No, I didn't. You read that? That said it Going to church does not make you religious. Now, that was, I read that in the Sunday paper, that you do not have to go to church to have religion. 90% of the people who go to church are not religious. Right. And I really think, that's why I, I don't go to church, but I wouldn't say I'm an atheist either. But other, outside of that, whatever she said, about that right there. Well, I'll tell you, I can't tell you just how much I've enjoyed this conversation and talking with you today. How much fun we've had. 
use this message for many years to show to different people. And I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your life in a short time. We'll see you again. Good.